Awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us today on this beautiful post snowy snow snow apocalypse day. Um, hopefully everyone is able to dig out. Um, I know that we were finally able to get to it after we had access to a snow machine because man, that was it's hard, it's hard to get out of our driveway this morning. So um, thank you all for joining us. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Um, so we want to get started on um, today's meeting. We do have, you know, in your packet, the, the March 1st meeting summary for those folks who would like to reference that. Um, and then our first point of discussion is actually going to be the Sub-Regional Service Council recommendation. So we, as a committee, received this Oh, I feel like a couple of weeks ago now, we weren't able to get it on the March 1st conversation. So we wanted to bring it back to this group for discussion. Um, Doug, anything you want to say to introduce this item? Sure, happy to do so. Well, whoa, so that was some feedback. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, you yeah. sound good. Okay, good. Um, no, I'm, I'm just, as, as you mentioned, Madam Chair, I think we're excited just to finally get this on the agenda, get going. I made sure it was first on the agenda this time. I wasn't making that mistake again. So um, your pleasure, uh, Madam Chair, if you want me just to just run down through it real quick or- Yeah, let's do a brief overview. And then one thing I really wanna do is get feedback from this group. So I know that Kathleen has a lot of feedback, but other groups, um, I, we wanna make sure to get you know, your thoughts on this item. Um, so we'll just open it up to the group after that. So let's do a brief overview and then let's hear what the folks have to say. Great, thank you very much. Well, um, you know what? It might be best if I just share my screen. Um, do that real quick. You guys see it? Yes, there okay, it is. Cool. All Thanks. right, great. So yeah, um, as, as the chair said, I think we're excited to, to finally begin to have a conversation about this. So what we've done, we tried to put together a very short um, recommendation, tried to fit it all on one page um, for your consideration that this afternoon. And I know there will be a um, number of comments and a good discussion, but really, you know, the, the underlying uh, recommendation as proposed by staff is, um, um, is to um, establish these local transit service councils, or sub-regional service councils, whatever we're calling those, um, and the concept will, as the uh, as the five bullets uh, suggest, improve collaboration between RTD and the communities it serves, increase the opportunity for public input through locally accessible forms, advance social equity goals by determining community-based transit plans that identify transportation and service gaps, especially in low-income and, and minority neighborhoods promote innovative mobility solutions at the local level, consistent with the RTD board's overall service goals and objectives. And last but not least, provide an opportunity to address geographic equity and, and rebuild trust and transparency um, with constituents. And those, those are common themes that have been raised um, through the life of this the governance subcommittee that we um, as a group um, collectively would like to address. So the membership as proposed um, is basically, we want the, the service councils to be representative of the communities at large. Um, and the membership um, shall include elected officials from each city, town, county within the, within the district, uh, a broad spectrum of interest and geography to ensure social, economic, and financial and environmental equity considerations are represented and transit users, of course. And I think um, the LA Metro version of this, I thought was quite interesting that they made a point of, um, of making sure that there, there were um, uh, tried and true users of the system that were included. Now, it's not mutually exclusive. The two top bullets I would suggest to you would be great if the representatives um, were, were regular transit users. So they have a, a, a good feel for, for what uh, um, you know, what it is ultimately they would be discussing. So in the district section of this, um, and part of the conversation that we have that we, there's a, there was an understanding that we're probably, just because of the shared timeline that we're working under and, and the understanding that we had to get a recommendation um, out on the floor and, and uh, get past that so we can talk about some other issues that the subcommittee has on this list of priorities is that what we're suggesting is that um, 
uh, the recommendation is for RTD to establish a work group of regional stakeholders to um, comprehensively evaluate the two, two, um, uh, the two concepts that we've talked about as, as a group. Um, one, based on county boundaries, which is similar to the Dr. Cog sub-regional forums, and then the travel sheds, as we had um, a, a not as lengthy conversation about as the, as the county boundaries, but it's one that we believe is worth further exploration. And we provided at least a concept with regards to, we looked at the four quadrants of our region. There's nothing to suggest that it has to be four quadrants. It could be, you know, as many as you want. But with an understanding that what that does, if that it, it follows the mobility patterns. Um, the county forums obviously has the benefit of being consistent with, um, uh, with you know, Dr. Cog's uh, sub-regional forums. The, the geopolitical boundaries are already established. There's good relationships within the county, counties amongst the, the, the neighboring jurisdictions and all that kind of good stuff. So the, the recommendation is to further explore that with uh, regional stakeholders. And last but not least, um, RTD resource allocation. Um, you know, some of the conversations that have been had with regards to geographic equity and the understanding of that and some of the, some of the stuff that's been playing out in, um, uh, you know, I know there's, there's that issue in Parker that there've been some conversations about, you know, whether um, you, they're getting adequate service for their, for their sales tax revenue that they put into the system, that we thought uh, maybe it would be a good idea if, um, uh, if RTD development submitted to these sub-regional councils, and, and I don't know if annual report is the right time frame to do that, maybe it's every other year, whatever it is, but something that illustrates how the revenues generated within each sub-region um, are used to provide transportation value to the residents of the region. Now, I, that value, I think, needs to be further defined, what, what that is. I don't think it necessarily means um, the, 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 the amount of service just within that sub-regional council, if that makes sense, within that district, but the overall value that um, is being provided back to the residents of that, of that service uh, district. For example, um, you know, me, I live in Douglas County. There is tremendous value to me personally, knowing that I have access to a system in which I can get to all parts of this region, right? Um, it's not just simply the service that's provided within Douglas County, that's of value but value to the larger integrated system. Yeah, and not just quite frankly, the transit system, but the multimodal elements of that. Um, so anyway, that's, that's, um, that's in a quick one minute summary of what the recommendation is currently. And Madam Chair, I'll turn it back to you to facilitate the discussion. Great, awesome. So um, there's a, a couple different ways that you could try and flag me down, I guess. I'm not seeing a chat feature anymore. Um, so to raise your hand, you actually have to go to the reactions button. That's what I'm seeing on the bottom of my screen. And then you just raise your hand from there. Um, and then, you know, we'll call um, on anybody who wants to have discussion um, or any, you know, comments they want to throw out there. Um, I know that Kathleen has um, a lot to share with this group. So Kathleen, if it's okay to start with you and then other folks, if you wanna jump in after, then, then we'll go that way. Go ahead, Kathleen. Great, thank you all so much for the opportunity to speak today. Can you hear me okay? Okay, I've been having computer issues all day. So. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I really wanna um, thank the Governance Committee and the, and the overarching Accountability Committee for all of your work that you've been doing over these many months and also um, thank the Dr. Cog staff for hosting the um, roundtables that were held recently with the staff from all of the different communities. Um, for those of you I haven't met, I'm Kathleen Brackey with Boulder County and I work in our community planning and permitting and transportation planning team. And I just wanted to share a few of our um, comments and suggestions as part of the conversation around the local service councils. Um, we also provided a, a memo um, as well to share with the committee members. So again, just trying to help um, provide ideas and feedback on this um, in addition to the um, technical meetings that um, we attended recently. So 
Um, again, overall, we really support the intent of the local service councils for all the reasons that Doug mentioned in terms of really creating that collaborative approach, working with RTD and our local communities, creating more opportunity for closer to home engagement and um, direct accountability and transparency around transit service planning, and also to be able to reflect the unique nature of how our um, different uh, customers are traveling around um, our communities, around our county, and around the region as a whole. Um, what we found in Boulder County through the data that was shared with the reimagined process is that over 80% of the people using transit in Boulder County, um, their trips begin and end in Boulder County. So it's a lot of intra Boulder County travel. And so we really looked at these service councils as a way to be able to do more of that um, customized service planning for that, uh, the local service and that intra county county service, but we recognize that, you know, again, we're all part of an interconnected region and we need to work um, closely with RTD and our broader partners for regional connectivity as well. So we just thought this new, this new local service council adds a great opportunity to that mix and for all of us to continue working together. Um, we, we also thought that it would be helpful because um, again, as Doug mentioned, we have this experience that we've built together over the last couple of years working as part of the Dr. Cog sub-regional forums that are structured at a county basis. And, and as many of you know, early on in that process, I was skeptical to that and was it gonna work and how's it gonna work and how's it gonna support our regional goals as well as local. And I have to say that over this experience, it's shown it worked really well. And not only has it worked well to deliver projects and programs for our Boulder County um, geographic area, it's helped us work together collaboratively with other sub-regional forums to do inter-regional projects. For example, the Colorado um, 7 corridor is a combination of Boulder County communities working together with Adams County and City and County of Broomfield. So I think we've learned a lot through that time uh, together. And I think that experience at that county-based sub-regional forum would be advantageous then to build upon for the RTD um, transit related um, local service council. So trying to build from our experience and build from our, our strengths. Um, the other thing, reason why we think the county-based sub-regional or county-based local service council approach would work well is that it's a way to track the resources. A lot of the conversation that you all have been having in the accountability committees and subcommittees is around um, accountability to our stakeholders and to the public. And we can look at how, our, how is um, money generated at a county-wide scale to RTD, both the base system and fast tracks, and then how is that allocation done? So it's a geographic area structure that seems to work well, uh, not only from a service planning standpoint, but from a fiscal um, management standpoint as well. And then um, again, we really appreciate all of the work that this committee has done and the consultants to do that national peer research. And uh, along with that, what we've learned through the Seattle area example is that having these county-based service councils has also been an opportunity to generate additional uh, resources for transit. We talked um, recently in one of the committee meetings around the importance of partnerships and how partnerships help us leverage our dollars. So we think that by structuring these local service councils at a county-based scale, it would create the opportunity to leverage resources together. Because again, delivering mobility for our region isn't only on the shoulders of RTD, it's on all of us, our local communities, our counties, our cities, and our nonprofit and private sector partners. So I think these local service councils, however they end up being structured, will really be a great way to help grow the um, amount of partnerships that we can um, do together. Um, and again, there's probably a lot of different ways that the resource allocation component can be done. I think as Doug mentioned, there's some good examples there around looking at pre-COVID service levels for both local and intra-county routes and going from there. And then certainly making sure that the um, all of the different um, social equity considerations are taken into account across um, our region. And then I think it's important around the representation on the local service councils, however they're structured, whether it's county based or otherwise, to make sure that there's a broad representation of all of the stakeholders from the communities, from our elected officials, from our nonprofit partners, from our 
um, in our case, like our mobility for all uh, coordinating council members, and then as was mentioned, uh, riders and customers as well. So we just look forward to continuing to work on this together with you all. Anything we can do from Boulder County to help with this, we'd be glad to. And again, thank you for the opportunity to speak today and to have participated in the prior um, technical roundtable. So glad to answer any questions or do additional um, work on this with you. So thank you. Great, thank you so much. Are there any questions that folks have for Kathleen that they'd like her to clarify or additional comments for her? Okay, so thank you, Kathleen. And um, committee members, you did get this sent in your email just uh, right before this meeting, her memo um, that she used to, to read off of if you need to go back and refresh. Um, so, I think that um, you know that is some great feedback uh, for this committee. Do we have anybody else who would like to speak to recommendations or anything? Okay, so Deb, I see your hand. Um, let's go ahead and go with you. Well, Kathleen, you have convinced me that Boulder County should be its own subregion. So good job on that. Um, great data to be able to support that. On the other hand, it's first of all, my understanding that the recommendation of the committee is to hand this off to RTD for further deliberation to determine what those sub area councils should look like geographically and their more detailed function. So we will be lobbying RTD, no doubt. I do wanna make not the opposite case, but a case for travel sheds. In this case, it sure seems like Boulder County is a discrete travel shed. The other counties, including where Westminster is located in Adams County, have much more overlap. Uh, within Adams County to Denver to Broomfield County, many of our routes cross multiple jurisdictions. So that's why I would turn it back to the experts at RTD plus the local stakeholder input to figure out where best to determine the travel sheds for the remaining part of the RTD district. Thank you, Chair Malika. Great, thanks. All right, so, you know, we're building a case for both sides here. All right, Deborah Johnson, you want to jump in here? Thank you so much, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to um, just give some initial thoughts. And I want to qualify these by saying um, this was something that uh, my team and I discussed, and this hasn't been discussed with the board collectively, uh, but looking at it from the operability of what we do to day to day. So first and foremost, as outlined, uh, we support uh, the Sub-Regional Service Council recommendation. As it relates to the proposal, the first four bullets, totally on board with that, you know, all the way. Just wanted some clarification regarding the proposal's fifth bullet as we talk about, you know, the equity piece once again, because recognizing equity means fairness, equality is the state of being equal. So when we talk about, you know, the equity aspect, we pride ourselves in being RTD responsive to a variety of needs across the region. And so that's why we just wanna make sure we understand that. Um, membership, and thank you so much, uh, you know, Executive Director Rex from Dr. Cobb. As it relates to supporting the service council membership, I'd be remiss not to say that my emphasis is on ensuring the customer's voices are heard. Um, it's very important to me that I have an understanding of the pain points and having been in Los Angeles where I served as the chief operations officer, I'm very familiar with the service councils and recognizing that it was the customers who better enabled me to garner an understanding of what it is. And it's not to disparage any other, but I wanna ensure that that composition there is first and foremost. Um, the geography um, on the face of the, the supportive of the travel shed for the simple reason, you know, uh, recognizing it's important that we establish a work group to ascertain what is best, but recognizing that we recently here at RTD um, started leveraging geographic sectors as well. And so as we talk about that, just didn't want that to be lost in the discussion. And then last, but certainly not least, when we talk about RTD resource allocation, and I know um, Director Rex spoke to this, but when we talk about value, I think about it in the sense of a value statement. What is our value proposition? Because for all intents and purposes, we are people moving people by providing mobility freedom, enabling access to original activity centers, you know, enhancing one's quality of life. And when I talk about activity centers, I'm talking about those from a regional perspectives as we talk about 
large employment sites and business centers like, you know, the Central Business District in Denver, DTC, the Anshield Center. We talk about educational centers, institutions, excuse me, medical centers, social services, which you can find in Denver and Boulder, the convention centers like National Western Center, Gaylord Center, the airport, entertainment uh, venues that are in Denver and Broomfield. So when we talk about the value, I just wanna recognize that we're talking about moving people and engaging in the value that's being provided from that value proposition aspect. But more importantly, um, one thing that I do bring to the table, having been in a different region, I asked this of my staff, what did we, what have we done as RTD in, rec in recognizing the economic impact we have, not just on the contributions to the overall region, but the state and federal level? What are those direct and indirect impacts that the transportation element has, you know, in a broader level? Because when we talk about sales use, you know, tax. Individuals may be in outlying areas, but we are basically funneling money through, you know, the economy that's helping to spawn everything holistically. So I just wanted to ensure that I put that forward as we talk about the value proposition. That's something I just want us to be cognizant of. So thank you very much for uh, allowing me to share um, me and my team's thoughts. I appreciate it. Awesome, great, great points. Yeah, and I think that um, when it comes to the um, equity uh, statement, especially for that, that last bullet there, I do wanna point folks to the document that's also provided in our packet, which is the equity assessment that the RTD Accountability Committee has kind of worked together. Now, I, I think that you know a lot of organizations are kind of moving towards, you know, how do you, you know, conduct uh, an equity assessment moving forward, but hopefully that would be something that the work that um, this subcommittee or the stakeholder group um, could also bring forward, right? Because we want to make sure that we're assessing how this is really benefiting or burdening various communities. And then you can work down, there's lots of great questions that, um, you know, that this subcommittee has decided to outline as, as ways that we should you know, evaluate some of these decisions. And so um, along those lines, I think that is what we were kind of probably meaning in that as well as, you know, geographic equity. How do we just walk that fine balance of our people um, getting the same amount of resources and investment as other communities and how does that work? Um, are there any other questions or comments either specific for Deborah Johnson or in just reference to this. Okay, so Lynn, I see your hand. Go ahead and jump in. It's a hand the old fashioned way. I'm not seeing my uh, my hand today. It's it works, a, I see it. So it's it all about it. like it comes and goes. That's right, thanks, Julie. Um, uh, thanks. I uh, um, just wanted to say that that the, this is scheduled for a study session with the board next week, and it's a little late. I um, sort of early on, I talked with um, Deborah Johnson, and I misunderstood. I thought another study session that we had that has now been moved later included this. At any rate, we have it set up for next week before the full committee meets for um, board uh, comment. I I would support. Uh, a lot of what uh, Doug Rex did, I think he did a very nice job. In particular, I am hearing, um, I've received a couple of emails from uh, TMA, actually maybe one so far from TMA, and, and I'm told that I will be hearing from other local coordinating councils and, and maybe from another TMA or two, um, that they feel like there are a number of, of uh, organizations right now working at the county level and they're the sub-regional forums. Um, so, I, I would really support the idea of sending that back to RTD to look at, to talk to the stakeholders. There are a lot of people who seem to have opinions on whether it's travel shed or whether it's um, a county-based decision. Um, and I think, you know, one thing I can say, I feel comfortable saying on behalf of the board is that we all support the idea of earlier listening. Uh, I think you're hearing a change from RTD when you hear Deborah Johnson talking and she started that process in several ways. So whether the board supports this in particular, we'll know more in another week, but uh, um, we do um, applaud that effort. Thanks. Awesome, great. You thank you so much, Lynn, and thanks for letting us know about that study session. Um, I think a lot of us would like to, to chime in and see what you guys, uh, how the discussion goes. Um, any other questions or comments regarding 
this recommendation to the sub-regional service councils. Elise, go ahead, jump in. My apologies for uh, have, being on another call when this one started, so I, I missed the intro comments, but I, I support the proposal and the idea of having a, a conversation um, at RTD on the, particularly the geography of these local service councils. I, I tend to favor the, the county-based geography because a couple of reasons. One is we need to add more revenues to the system. Some of those are probably gonna have to be local and you, and it is adding multiple layers of bureaucracy to try to do it in a travel shed. Whereas counties can easily put something on the ballot and talk to their voters directly. They, and those local elected officials have a relationship with their constituents and they can talk directly about that. So I think it's a more realistic way if we're gonna add revenues to the system to look at it county-based. I also like the idea of potentially not creating a new level, a level of bureaucracy that then constituents have to get familiar with. But if we worked off of the Dr. Cog sub-regional forums and added um, some seats to it to address the user experience and equity issues, then um, that, that's a form that is, is already workable, it exists. And those same people are knowledgeable about the Dr. Cog tip process. There'll be a greater connection between transit and the larger tip process. To me, that, that makes more sense than creating a whole new body of folks that are gonna be talking about transportation. Um, I think it's easier for our public to understand and they already have relationships with, with their elected officials in their county. That's a jurisdiction they know and understand. But I recognize other folks think Travel Shed would work um, so let's have a conversation about that. Um, I think both could be workable. It could be that Boulder County has to break off and, and be its own travel shed if we go that route. Um, but I, I think Doug, you did a great job with putting together the proposal. Great, thank you so much, Elise. Rhett, go ahead and jump in. Sure, I, I sat in on that uh, panel on environmental justice and transportation. Uh, that that uh, uh, was chaired. I think Deo is the chair of that, but it was uh, something uh, that Dr. Cog uh, put together, also helped put together and sponsor. It really struck me how difficult it can be sometimes to have people of all economic strata participate in these things. And and they were talking about how hard it is to get people to that represent that segment of the community. And I, I wonder if there's some way that, I mean, in their case, they looked at models where they're actually compensating people to come to meetings and things like that. But we really need to have that as part of this, of this group that's making these transit decisions because it's those people that are transit dependent that probably are gonna have a harder time being able to get the time and, and, and the resources to participate. I don't know if the answer is, is for example, uh, you know, especially, you know, we want transit users. So, uh, so it's free passes on RTD, uh, but we need to think, one of the things that needs to be, I believe needs to be a consideration here is how do you make sure you've got all those economic strata represented in this? That was it. Yeah, and I think that's a great point, Rhett. Um, especially when it came to, you know, discussions around these service councils, really making sure that the stakeholders involved are diverse in their representation. And so I think that that is definitely something the work group could hammer out is how, 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 what are the tools that we have to really drive that diversity and really make sure that we're getting the appropriate um, uh, representation at all levels because I feel like, especially for the transit users, we that representation needs to be real. And you know, you rely on RTD, you know, to get to work, to go shopping, you know, whatever your reason is to get your kid to school. Um, you know, we we need to hear that particular perspective. And so you're right. I I, I think that um, everyone in this group, I think, seems to be in agreement of that need. And I I see that definitely part of this group moving forward and part of the discussion. Go ahead and if I could add one other little comment on it. I, I really appreciated sitting in on, on your meetings and Dea's meeting, 
how good a job you all did of, of looking at all the best practices of all the peer agency groups, peer agency transit group. I really thought there was a, a very thorough process there and, and, and think that this document reflects that. Yes, I agree. I think staff did a great job at bringing us all of our options as we continue to, to you know, hammer out this idea. Um, and there's still a lot of work to do, right? And I think that that's what this recommendation really <laughs> just tried to pull together is the fact how much more work needs to be done and why a, a work group um, is going to be needed to take this um, to the next step. So. Um, all right, guys, I want to wrap up this topic so we have time for our next discussion. Um, so thank you, everybody, for your feedback and your comments. Feel free if you, you know, think of something later on, email us, let us know. Um, you know, this is going to go to the larger RTD Accountability Committee so that um, it'll be another point of discussion. So this isn't where it ends today. All right, cool. So let's move on to our next topic, which is going to be a conversation around T and Cs. So Doug, am I kicking this back to you? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, so, you know, we've, we've begun our conversations obviously with partnerships and our last meeting, we had a joint meeting of the subcommittees to discuss that. And towards the end of this, if we have time, we can begin to articulate maybe what a recommendation might be. Although I will say right up front that I thought Elise Jones had some very, very um, intriguing recommendations um, last time um, when we talked. I think uh, actually Dea is the one that kind of gave it a name, the, this idea of, of challenge grants to try to find innovative solutions uh, related to partnerships. But we can talk about that in a minute. Um, I know um, Natalie, she, she, is, is Natalie on the call? She was. Oh, there she is, there she is. Natalie's on, she did some research with uh, for us um, related to um, um, the relationship and partnerships with TNCs from some of our peer agencies. And um, I'm gonna let her, Natalie take over. She's been an absolute godsend for us. We're so appreciative of CDOT um, allowing us to, to, uh, to, to use her in some of this research and she's fabulous. So please, Natalie, go ahead. Thanks, thanks Doug. Um, yeah, so I have a little slideshow I can share if I'm have permissions. Yes, looks like I do. Um, so I think, oh, let's see. Sorry. I'm not seeing it. Hang on. You know, she seen the share button, Natalie? Um, Your screen at the bottom. Yeah, is it, there's a green, yeah. green icon. Okay. Let's see. It's one of those pull your mouse down to discover what's down there. There it is. Right. Otherwise hidden. It's hiding. There there's go. a raise okay, your hand so. down there somewhere I've never been able to find. <laughs> okay. In the okay, can we see your slides? Thanks. Slide show. Here. Yeah. Go. Good. All right, great. <laughs> um, okay, so I just did. Um, a quick overview of a couple of um, the peer agency um, partnerships with TNCs and a couple of other agencies as well. Um, so basically um, these partnerships fall into three categories. Um, there's kind of a um, partnership that has the goal of providing tr uh, paratransit service. There's um, a first and last mile connection program. And then there is a program that is focused on um, supplementing COVID-19 um, service cuts. Um, so I'm gonna talk about DART, MARTA, King County, MBTA, and uh, Miami-Dade Transit. So DART's program, um, they are contracted with Uber to provide supplemental service to their GoLink program, which is an on-demand shuttle. Um, the goal here is to provide greater service capacity to this program, um, which serves 13 different zones. Um, and DART also partners with Lyft, um, or has partnered in the past, um, to um, provide paratransit service as well um, through pilot programs. 
um, MARTA has their MARTA Connect program, which actually started on election day um, this year to provide supplemental service on bus routes um, that were not running because of COVID-19 service cuts um, to connect users to um, polling locations. Um, so basically they provide vouchers. Um, and so this program has continued past election day. Um, and so when there's service disruptions, either due to COVID or um, planned or unplanned service um, on different routes or stations, uh, MARTA will provide vouchers for riders um, to get to the next available station. Just FYI to everybody, MARTA is, um, is Metro Atlanta's RTA. Right, and then DART is Dallas area. And then King County Metro in Seattle, Seattle area um, has their Via to Transit pilot program, um, which is an on-demand shared shuttle service, <laughs> shared shuttle service, <laughs> um, which is has the goal to connect um, riders to transit stations. So this is the first and last mile um, program. And so basically users just call um, or use the app to get a ride. Um, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes and is uh, comparable to a bus, uh, bus ticket ride. And then- MBC Natalie, can I, can I ask you a quick question yeah. on that one? I'm sorry, Madam Chair, if I may, just real quick, because it's timely. Um, the, um, do you know if they have the capability to, because uh, I know I know RTD at least was doing a pilot, I believe with Uber, someone correct me if I'm wrong, so that they can use the same platform to, to actually buy a bus ticket and schedule a TNC. Do you know if that's happening in King County? Just curious. Um, I'm not sure if that's happening in King okay. County or not. Because it, uh, I mean, because it takes 15 okay. to 20 minutes for someone to arrive, right? It just makes sense that, you know, that if you could do it all time. together, then, um, you know, that oh. bus would be, or the, sorry, that I'm TNC ride would be available as soon as you get off I'm the bus, mute. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Right. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, Massachusetts Bay Transit Authority. Um, they're conducting a pilot program, um, a paratransit pilot program um, and they're partnered with Uber, Lyft, and Curb. Um, and the goal here is to uh, lower cost and wait times and increase flexibility for the users. Um, riders just sign up directly with the companies and they receive subsidized rides through uh, the Transit Authority. And then Miami-Dade Transit has a COVID response program um, called Go Nightly. And here is, again, with um, COVID-19 service cuts, um, the goal is to um, provide essential workers and transit dependent users with transportation options, um, particularly at night when service is not running between 12 a.m. and 5 a.m. So users just use a promo code and can um, receive a, an Uber or Lyft ride during those hours when um, the bus service is not running. And that is all I had um, in the agenda packet um, attachment. There is a bunch of links to the different programs um, and then also to another article. Um, I have one more article that wasn't included in that attachment and maybe Doug, you could share that. Um, that has a lot more information about, um, it's a study on um, some of the impacts and um, more of an analysis of how these programs are implemented and funded. Um, so maybe Doug, I can have you send that out for me. Yep, we will do. Great, thank you. Great, well, thank you for that overview. I think that that's um, helpful to see how some other districts are trying to navigate. Um, one question I do have does, and sorry if this is a stupid question, but there are no stupid questions in this group. Okay, so um, does RTD have a platform that currently could include TNCs? Is that already in place? 
Well, anybody knows? So what I was going to say, what we do have, we're recognizing that we're using Lyft and those platforms to basically utilize those to buy fair media. We have not used them in the sense of working collaboratively to order a ride service. And one thing that I will say as we talk about this, uh, some of the trepidation around that just from an industry standard is the unwillingness of the TNCs to share their data. We're on an open source and they have all of our information, but we don't have the ability to ascertain, you know, origin and destination information or demographics or other things of the like because they're private, privately held entities. Deborah, thank you for that. I, um, I misspoke. I'm glad you brought that up. I totally forgot about that conversation. You're right. I remember it now. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions or comments regarding TNCs or questions for Natalie that this folks that this group might have? And I'm not seeing any. So as we continue this conversation about partnerships, um, I think we need to, I, I just wanna get a feel from the group and anyone can speak in here about next steps. So what are, where are we headed next? So we did talk about the challenge grants, which um, Doug talked about briefly. People were really excited about possibly pursuing that, but what are some additional steps that we need to do next when it comes to um, either exploring um, the idea, idea of different partnerships um, or anything specific with TNCs? Just wanna put that question out to the group. Go ahead, Elise. Well, I think there's a couple opportunities. Um, there's um, following up on the recommendations we've already made to RTD about setting aside some of the COVID relief funds um, for partnerships. And we may wanna uh, you know, think about some of the criteria on how to prioritize. There's likely to be, I'm told, um, additional infrastructure funding or um, stimulus type funds available as well. So I think those same recommendations would apply going forward. Um, um, I think that there's also um, the opportunity to put that on the platter for on the uh, to do list for the local service councils about identifying um, partners and partnerships that might be beneficial to helping, uh, particularly with local service and first and final mile connections to regional service. Um, and, and with primary employers. So I think that's another place where we might wanna um, add some recommendations as well. So those are just some initial thoughts. Great, thank you. Any comments? Go ahead, Rhett, jump in. Oh, you're muted, yeah. There we go. There you go. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I uh, have been working on ideas in this area and um, uh, some of which we're going to discuss in the um, Wednesday joint meeting with, uh, with operations and finance. But I think there really are great opportunities to, to try to use TNCs if you want to look at it in a very simple way in terms of first last mile, but also in a, in a way where they're done more efficiently and at a much lower cost and shared uh, vehicles as well, uh, to some degree like what Uber and Lyft have tried to do in terms of shared rides, but implementing that with a, a real strong focus on, on communities that have been bypassed by transit uh, that maybe are a mile or more away from where the stations are and don't have a reasonable way to get there. Uh, it, it is, it's both the right thing to do, but it's also a great economic opportunity for RTD to really expand their ridership by bringing a lot of people in from those communities into, uh, into the stations in, a, in an efficient and cost-effective way. So, um, we plan to, if anybody would like to be in on the, our meeting on Wednesday, you're all welcome to join us. We'll talk, 
We'll talk about a lot of other things, but I think it's, it's the last item on the agenda. So I hope we'll get to it. <laughs> Great, awesome. Thank you. Anybody else want to jump in on this conversation or have any further questions or comments for staff? Okay. I'm not seeing anything. So it looks like we have um, some additional conversations that are going to be happening on Wednesday, right, Rad? That's what you're saying. Um, and so, uh, you know, we'll continue to gather information as we, we start thinking about some um, recommendations moving forward. Anything else that you need from this committee or this group, Doug, or? Well, um, well Madam Chair, what I was gonna suggest is maybe I can you know, kind of formalize the conversations that we've had around partnerships. I don't know, in the form of a recommendation maybe um, for, for your review and comments uh, for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, because, <laughs> I hate to keep pushing our timeline, but uh, we do have other things we need to get to as well. But it's, so we can, I can do that. And then you guys can have a look at that. Um, and also at the next meeting, we're planning on taking up um, the conversations. One of the, your priority focus areas is related to the boundaries, boundary conversations. So staff has done, been doing a lot of, um, of, of analysis, GIS related work. And they wanted, they'll share that with you guys at the next meeting and um, begin to have a conversation because quite frankly, I don't think the, the two topics are mutually exclusive, right? I think there's opportunities in maybe the lower density areas of the region um, to be able to provide maybe some of these innovative solutions, right? As, if it's TNC, so be it, but some other, some other suggestions as well. Great, awesome. That sounds like a great game plan. Um, so, Thank you all so much for your time and your participation today. And of course your comments, we definitely appreciate those. Um, so I'm not gonna keep you. <laughs> and so let's end this meeting early. We'll continue up um, with the conversation on Wednesday with Rutt's committee. And then um, we'll look for, you know, some formalization of what we've discussed so far um, in the next week or so. Um, that we'll come back to this group. So thank you all for your time and have a good rest of your day. See you guys. Thanks everyone. <laughs> you stay warm. Stay warm, Next yeah. A joint committee meeting with operations. Oh, okay. So you and Daya. Yeah. All right. <laughs> See you, Rhett. Bye all. Bye.